All right, folks, how are we doing? It's Shabash. Welcome back to the channel. It's another monthly event roundup, this time looking at December 2021. A World's End is the official name of the event. And we welcome back the Abominable Scrooge for a couple of Kingdom Raids and the pets. But we do have some new content in the shape of Alphars. Uh, little elf-like mobs. And uh, what we're going to do is go over pretty much everything you can expect to aim for this month across all tiers and we have some really exciting stuff coming later in the month over the Christmas period. So let's dive in straight away to the two raids that make their return. That is the tier 5 Scrooge and the tier 9 Ebon Scrooge. We'll just filter them out. Now these raids are actually uh, super good relative for their tiers. Look at the tier 5 Scrooge first. Okay, uh, forgive my uh, drop pool not completed. However, uh, this is a tier 5 raid, as I said, and they're really strong drops in terms of gear. You've got the Jolly Stockings, tier 5 Jolly Stockings give you really nice balanced stats. And you also have the Top Hat down here. These are like the two uh, main armors that you want to target so for tier 5 even tier 6 uh, if you are you know a newer player you just started the game i highly recommend you leveling up to level 100 join a kingdom and and start taking uh, this tier 5 scrooge down top hat you know a legendary one and a legendary jolly stockings they will last you uh, for a couple of tiers absolutely no problem really strong the weapons themselves as well, there is a, you have a slay blade, slay blade, sorry, a rainbow. There is also a staff and a loot as well. They are pretty strong relative for their tier as well. So if you get, you know, a legendary plus of them, even a famed if you're new to the tier, uh, gonna be super strong. North Star is uh, quite uh, an interesting item, but uh, not really useful. Uh, Ring of Night, again, quite useful for buffing up going through raids or uh, going up against bosses which quite commonly cast uh, Omni Strikes against you. And uh, one of the accessories I forgot to mention which does also drop from the Tier 5 Scrooge is the Presence. Now Presence basically increase your luck bonus which kind of affects the, the chance of, uh, well, it increases your drop chance for for items from certain monsters which weren't guaranteed to drop. You know, some monsters, especially Arisen mobs, their, uh, their drop rate is actually really low. So increasing your luck chance through something like Presence or the Bag of Treats from Pumpkinhead does a similar job. And that will increase your drop rate for those rarer items. And... Now with the recent quality changes, luck is affected by quality, so you might want to uh, search for a higher quality pair of presents. You can wear both of them in your accessory slot. So the tier 9 Ebon Scrooge then. Uh, again, similar uh, story in terms of the, the relative tier. So the tier 9 gear is the Ebon gear. So you, you, you realize it can actually drop the tier 5 Jolly Stockings but it also drops, of course, the tier 9 Ebon uh, Jolly Stockings. Same for, for all the items, basically. You will see them duplicated, the tier 5 stuff. So to be honest, even tier 5, lower tier, uh, from tier 5 to tier 9 enemy uh, players, you can you can tag uh, the Ebon Scrooge if your kingdom is killing it regularly, and you will still get the lower tiered gear. As long as you are above that tier, uh, you can still get the gear, but you will not get the Ebon gear if you are below tier 9. And uh, same story, the Jolly, the Ebon Jolly Stockings, Ebon uh, Top Hat, really, really nice uh, for tier 9 in terms of stats. Um, not going to be better than uh, Apollyon gear, but it, it might be easier for you to get. Stats are nice, but there's no wars on, on them or anything. Uh, weapons, again, really nice actually if you can pick up uh, an Ebon Rainbow, Ebon Candy Cane, the Caroling Loot is really good. Uh, in terms of you know pure stats so yeah something to look for something for everyone uh, in the mid tier to be honest with you uh, you do also get some nice uh, goodie drops 
terms of potions, golden keys, uh, panaceas, that kind of thing as well. So definitely presents you want to target. And if you're a newer player, definitely try and uh, reach tier 5, target the jolly stockings and uh, the top hat. We really uh, bode really well for you. So we do have uh, the same <laughs> aforementioned name uh, in turn but as, uh, as pets as well. So of course, all of the event pets are cryptid rarity. They have that Master Forge background. And I'm honestly going to be inclined to say that the tier five pet, uh, the Scrooge is, you know, actually, <laughs> actually kind of better than the, the tier nine pet, uh, mainly due to Inquest. Inquest is a buffing skill, which gives you temporary double crit up. And that's equivalent to about a plus 50% crit chance. So from a tier five perspective, you know, if, especially if you are going majestic, you know, you, you get the Osmo strike two, you get the elemental strike two skills, which can crit and they, you know, you're going to hit seriously hard if you, if you get that crit up and uh, definitely potential to use one of these instead of a wisp, for example, because, you know, inquest is going to go up and uh, stick a couple of broken bestialize in there once you reach tier 6 or you take down some behemoths and your osmo strike is gonna you get that crit on an osmo strike you know it's gonna heal you pretty much to full health so as long as you're using a you know a decent weapon and uh, yeah it will also offer uh, increased you know a bit of damage output way more than the wisp of course arcana 2, ice strike 2, shooting star all do decent damage and then you've got rebuke there which lowers Temporary lowers uh, enemies' magic stats uh, significantly. Ebon Scrooge, on the other hand, feels like it's just uh, not strong enough compared to what else is available at tier nine. You know, if you are playing Bahamut, you're gonna you're gonna be flying around with uh, your Crimson Gazer, your Nidhogg, or you know other stronger uh, event pets, but such as the Phoenix. But uh, you not really want to be using this, and you know if you are playing uh, a non-pet build, uh, you're probably going to want to stick to you know, more uh, more well-established support pets such as uh, Pale Dragon or other event pets that can kind of boost you in other ways. Damage isn't really super good. I mean, I think that with eight percent spell chance, it should be quite active. But a nice storm too is nice. It's going to be proccing freeze on your opponents, you know, some of the time, but uh, I, I would say there are better options out there. So let's have a look at the other uh, new followers available this month. And these are the Alphars. We have the tier 4 Alphar, really interesting, and we have the tier 7 Alphar Mage. Again, quite an interesting pet. Let's talk about the tier 4 pet, which is going to be doing a little bit of damage. This is going to be an offensively minded pet compared to the Wisp, which is, you know, the, the most commonly recommended pet for, for all newer players. But honestly, I reckon uh, if you find one of these or, you know, check the, the main discords for people sharing this pet, actually 90% action rate, 10% spell chance. You even have 4% block chance and you have an 8% heal chance. You get to dispel at tier 4 which is gonna cure way more things than the wisps heal does for example wisps heal uh, really only gonna stick to the four basic elements uh, and stunned as well but dispel is going to be able to clear things like blight uh, which is really nice double edge gonna be doing you know it's a high penetration attacking skill and it doesn't actually when you normally use double edge yourself you know you have the minus health against you your 10 percent health against you that when your pet uses it it doesn't affect you and then you also have a, a nice little ward skill ward of iron so that's actually going to uh, proc ward and uh, give you some ward turns heal a bit of ward as well so really active pet as well going to be doing something pretty much every turn a uh, really strong candidate honestly for for really you know from tier 4 onwards best pet and let's look at the tier 7 the, the mage then the mage version this is uh, quite interesting in that it gets an AoE spell in terms of Winter Wind 2. This is like the Magus uh, specialization, gonna be, yeah, just an AoE, uh, cold AoE. 
Also has the Flame 4 single target and the Drain 2 single target spell, which uh, kind of works. Oh, apologies there. Kind of works the opposite of Double Edge. Um, when your pet uses Drain, it does actually heal you. So, Double Edge doesn't harm you, but Drain does heal you. Uh, really high spell chance, 60%. And uh, even a bit of uh, protection chance as well, so it's 3% block chance. So, looking at like uh, Dragon Knight Beastmasters, I reckon because it's a gold cost in pet, definitely worth a pickup uh, for sure. I'm not quite sure what the damage output is going to be like, but uh, certainly if you're going to be doing uh, horde mode dungeons, you're probably going to be wanting to pick this up for sure. Uh, buff that winter wind as much as you can and uh, really nice pet really really interesting pet so those are the the two raids and the four followers we then have uh, some enemy alphars uh, introduced now interestingly enough oh we've got uh, lots of alphars okay obviously ignore the doc, the doc alphars and the los alphars maybe they evolved from the from the alphars but Odie's done something really nice in that he's made these new event mobs only spawn in one of the themed dungeons and of course that is the Goblin Fortress. What kind of connotations it has with the festive period over December, uh, yeah, you make your mind up on that one. But essentially these Alpha mobs naturally only spawn in Goblin Fortresses. The Arisen versions. Uh, of obviously also spawned in Valley of the Gods in tier 10 but from everyone uh, below the Alpha is a tier 4 mob the Alpha Mage is a tier 5 mob and you can see they all drop the same items uh, you see the Risen versions all drop the same and these are a Stranger's Gift and an Alpha Trinket so these are super interesting items you can't send your friends any gifts like certain other uh, GPS AR games, uh, you got to open them yourself. You can see these are literally the only thing these drop. And well, Goblin Family. Uh, I was just going to check if there was something in the codex which tells you which dungeon, if it's a themed dungeon, they appear in. It just says uh, dungeon. That would be really nice if it said Goblin Fortress, because they can't appear in any other dungeon. Um, Arisen mobs aside. There is also a couple of Alphar bosses. We have the Alphar Lord, again dropping the same Stranger's Gift Alphar Trinket as a tier 5 boss. And then you have the Arisen version, which is tier 9. Also has the, the same drop pool, but you see that yellow uh, God Forging aura. The, this boss can God Forge your gear. So from tier 9 onwards, you can see this in the Goblin Fortress and it can God Forge any of your Demon Forge gear. So that's a really nice addition. Uh, something for, you know, even the, the, the top uh, higher leveled players making the Goblin Fortress really attractive uh, to run th this month. And let's have a look at uh, these items then that you drop. You go into your items tab with the Alphar Trinket up there. And then you've got the Stranger's Gifts down here. So let's uh, let's use one. They're, they're fairly common, you know, once you get to do some, uh, some Horde mode dungeons. And it's uh, like Christmas has come early. These basically follow the Mimic drop pool, I believe, and from the comments I've seen so far, I think the best thing you can find in here are summoning scrolls. Um, well, you can see you get some really random stuff. Going to be similar to what you get from your uh, town hall in terms of what you can find. I'm pretty sure it's the same drop pool. So it's not actually Mimic drop pool, but it's like, uh, I think it's... I don't know if there's a, an official term for it, but it's like fishing drop pool, what you can find from fishing, what you can find from uh, the town hall. Those uh, claiming rewards from the Citadel. So I haven't really found anything useful yet. I'll tell you what would be really nice to make this really awesome is if we could open multiple at once. And uh, that would make this oh, a whole lot better. Same with summoning scrolls as well. If you want to use multiple summoning scrolls, you can't. You just got to sit there tapping one by one by one and you even got to <laughs> you have to go in and use spell swords ring okay doesn't look like we're gonna find anything super fancy for this video but 
you notice that there hasn't been any quality versions of uh, items I found. That is where the Alpha Trinket comes in. This gives you a 60 minute buff, which supposedly increases the chances of finding something rare when opening Stranger's Gift. So if we go to our uh, buffing page, you, you can actually see at the top right there in uh, the world screen, the buff is there. And in our buff page, we have 60 minutes of Alpha Trinket buff. There we go. Yep tells you we get something rarer. Let's open a couple of more of these gifts then see if we can actually find something. Basically this is going to make you know gear that you unlock, well bone, not very nice, uh, gear that you find is, is likely going to be of a superior or above quality. More more materials, always nice for ascension. Wouldn't mind some sylphium here. A warm auspicious garb. That is a unknown origin item with uh, with an element, which is actually quite nice. If that's a tier three, uh, going to be quite nice for a swash. Okay, so it doesn't guarantee a quality on the item, but there you go, superior tural feather. If only quality affected dexterity, that might be useful. Took out for Gada. Let's wait until we get. See if we can find a piece of gear that actually has a... There we go. Famed Frilled Naga Halberd. So we're straight up to Famed the immediately off the bat. That is the... You're never going to want... If you know, you know, what you're going to do, you're going to save up a bunch of these gifts, you know, maybe open them on Christmas Day, or if you normally open them the night before, you might want to open a bunch of these the night before, whatever you want to do. Just remember to use the trinket before you do so, and hopefully you might find something nice. So... In terms of the main event then, in terms of uh, a year's end, that's basically what you've got to look forward to. You've got this ni nice checklist uh, by me by Conk. Basically, yeah, four followers, four new enemies, including the the two bosses that Arisen Alpha Lord should be tier nine, the raid bosses, and then uh, new items this month. So that is a really nice checklist there. It's normally pinned on the Oino Legends and the main owner discord actually so that's a good thing if you are completing your codex for the new mobs however check the orna calendar out we have got something crazy to look forward to towards the back end of december it's not quite the 12 days of christmas but it's the 10 days of orna raids coming from the december the 20th for 10 days Old event raids are coming back for two days apiece. Not all of them, but uh, a lot of them are coming back. And uh, this is super, super interesting. Let's go from the top then. We also have sprinkled in there, actually, this really nice follower event. Friends and family over, uh, over Christmas Eve until Boxing Day. All followers that have been available throughout the year talking about event pets can be found in vestries over these three days. If you missed out the Phoenix, Ashen Phoenix in January this year, you can get it five days early and that'll be a nice uh, Christmas present. Let's have a look. We also have the Solstice event coming again. So we've got the King and uh, Queen Docalfer. Uh, no, sorry, the Los Alpha Lord and the uh, Queen of the Alpha, or King of Las Alpha, Las Alpha King, one of the one of the other. But anyway, Queen de Alpha, uh, really nice uh, dust gear, giving you immunity to stunned and sleep. Really amazing for for swash, and uh, those boots for sure. Really strong item. We get an elemental pair, and we have of course Lucky Event coming again. Just had one, I think, didn't we? Uh, Spelunking Event just before Christmas, and then. 10 days of raids, so we start off with Trevelyan. What we're going to find here, well, get get at least two Trevelyan charms. Uh, when was that? I can't remember. <laughs> I wonder if the Meliodas, the event Meliodas, will also appear in uh, Battlegrounds and maybe Valley of the Gods as well. Uh, yeah, the, the actual event, King Crown. We then have Ceres. Now, this Ceres event is super important for Tier 9 and above. The world raid of Ceres drops the Ferocious Bullseye, and it's the world raid only. Now, I believe when these 10 days of raids are here, the Kingdom raids and the world raids will both be available. 
So, but just remember on Ceres, if you want those ferocious bullseyes, they appear from the world right only. Then we've got Kerberos, really good time to pick up the pet. Um, yeah, actually, I don't know if the pets themselves will be there on the individual raid days. I guess not, seeing as it's uh, 10 days of raids. But nevertheless, over a friends and family event, you can pick up the Kerberos pet, get those alignments. And uh, yeah, Kerberos gear, again, the weapons are nice, especially the staff. That staff is absolutely killer. Uh, ward on it, high magic, and 7% uh, base action rate for your pet. And then we've got the Dioscuri. I think we'll just move on from the Dioscuri. Surtur is back. If you missed out the, the chest or any gear or the swords, you're going to be back. Hell is also back a uh, couple days after. So notice that basically each raid crosses two days. So you'll have, there'll be two raids available uh, after the first date. And uh, all, all they do cross over, so that's super nice. So Hell's going to be here. Get some Hell Feathers if you missed out. Um, what else? I mean, Hell's Gear in general was, was pretty nice, especially if you're planning to go Ramshaft or late game. Uh, really nice gear. Going to be hard to, you know, target farm for, for just one day, but you never know, you might get lucky. Merlin's back. If, uh, and if you watched our On the Champions video, you'll notice the Foresight played a, a pretty big, uh, actually a huge impact on the, on us winning that event. I switched out after two sets to my highest Foresight gear and uh, that first turn advantage was absolutely huge. And of course Merlin has gear for loads of tiers, I think from is it tier 6 onwards or tier 5 onwards. So. Definitely going to be one for, for people to farm who like PvP. We then got Balan coming back. Awesome, awesome Gilgamesh gear. Uh, Finesse as well for a couple of days after. That's the World Raid boss only. Uh, Finesse there. Really awesome <laughs> weapons, but uh, super rare. So, And then finally we've got Naganine uh, finishing off the event in style. And not much to say there. Get some smelly boots some smelly shoes and uh, you'll be well on your way to smashing out some hard endless as a swashbuckler in the end game so yeah you can check out the calendar here playorner.com forward slash calendar myself personally i'm going to be targeting ceres i need some more ferocious bullseyes and have nowhere near enough and probably look at maybe you know maybe tap some some merlins and uh if I'm really, really lucky, like Dan Plan, I'll get a Finesse Katana uh, to end the month in style. But this is really awesome seeing all this, uh, all these past event raids come back at the end of the year. And that's it, guys. That is a year's end. Thanks for watching. And of course, big thanks to all of the Arisen Orner Legends, uh, people supporting the basically Orner Legends ecosystem, the content and uh, the ongoing running of the website and the discord huge thanks and thanks to you for watching this video hope it was really helpful let me know what kind of uh, guides you like to see in the, the end of the month and the new year i will actually have some some spare time uh, but thanks for watching i'm shabash and we'll see you in the next video ciao